So we finished our server. Now it's time to add a front-end to it and create a client application to consume the GraphQL server. So let's go to the NX website and see how we can do that. And I think I'm gonna go with React. So I'm here at the Next.js guide and I believe these are the two commands that we need to add. So let's add a dev dependency of normal next. Okay. And that should give us the schematic of adding this generation here. So it'll be next generate uh, next app. And let's just call it client. Wow, what is all this? It turns out that currently the Angular dev kit schematic code generation library has moved its code for workspaces. Hopefully you won't run into this issue when you see this video because this should be fixed. But if you are running into this issue, I believe a workaround is to lock those files. So I'm going to copy these and then just add it to the dev dependencies of package.json. This way we're using the libraries before those files have moved. So I'm just do a yarn here to reinstall and reconfigure all the dependencies. And that still didn't work because we also need narwhal slash tau. I did a little bit of debugging and that was the thing that was missing. But with all of the dependencies, we can now run nx generate next app with the name of client. And we'll run through this interactive terminal prompt. And I want to just use SCSS, keep it simple. Okay, right, so if everything went well, we now have these two new files or directories. We have one for the client, and this is going to be all the front end stuff. We also have one for end to end testing. This one uses Cypress. I don't know if we're going to get into it because I don't actually know Cypress well enough. And then we also updated a bunch of files here. And to test if everything's working, you can run nx serve client or nx run client colon serve. And this should run the next app on 4200. And it'll look a little bit like this. So, not bad. So next we're going to create a custom schematic for our workspace and that's to get GraphQL code generation and specifically I just want the React hooks so we just get a bunch of hooks pre-generated for us and I'll just make everything a lot smoother. So it's not just going to be this, it's also going to be these other operators or these other packages. So hopefully I spell this correctly. I'm going to add all of them as dev dependencies. So we need the CLI, TypeScript operations, operations, and TypeScript React Apollo. Okay, I think I spelled all that correctly. I also remember I had to install the dev dependency of GraphQL Cogen Apollo Next SSR. And this is for a server-side rendering because we're using a Next.js app instead of just a normal create React app. All right, so let's open up our workspace.json and we're going to make a custom schematic. So that's going to be this property here under the GraphQL project. We're going to add the schematic of generate. And this is going to use the run command builder to run the generate. And that takes in a list of commands. And the command that we want is npx GraphQL code gen with the libs option or not with the config option where we can provide the path to our code generation YAML, which we haven't made yet. So we can go ahead and make that. And I'm going to add it into the tools directory. So over here, and that's codegen.yaml. And the reason why I put it into tools is because this is generally where you will put all your custom schematic related tools for the model repo ed, instead of a library or an app. All right, so let's write our code gen. We do want it to overwrite whenever we generate. And it's also a good thing that we have a schema first API, so we don't have to have the server running to generate the ser or generate the operation. So the schema could just be read from the files in GraphQL, our GraphQL library. Now we just need to define the generates. And YAML is weird, so the key here is going to be the actual file name, starting from the root. So this is going to create a new file called React.ts, and then the documents property is going to be what GraphQL files we're going to scan to create these operations. And lastly, we just need to add the plugins that we installed with Yarn. So that's the TypeScript, TypeScript operations, and TypeScript React Apollo. And also set with hooks to true under the config. And that's everything we need for the code generation, the YAML file. And then before we can run the generation, we do need some operations. So let's make a new directory in GraphQL source library where we can create the operations. And let's start with something simple. And that'll be the login because login just gives us a string back, which is the JWT. And if this is unfamiliar to you, 
the login mutation up here will take in a variable, which we call email, and we're defining it as a string that's required. And then when we run the mutation, we provide that variable to the login input of email. But now we can run that custom schematic by doing nx run the library that we attached it to, which is GraphQL, colon, and then the command, which we call generate. And if everything goes, oh no, generate. Did I put this in the wrong place? I guess I did. Okay, it's not in schematics. We actually want to put it inside of architect. So I'll put it right here. And this now needs a comma here. All right, let's try this again. All right, cool. So it parsed libs GraphQL source. What? Fail to load schema. Libs GraphQL source schemas. There we go. There's an S. Okay. There we go. Now we have our newly created react.ts file. And this is all the generated code that we need, including the types that we're going to use in the client side, as well as if I can find it, here it is, it's all the way at the bottom, the use mutation hook. So this is going to give us the hook that we can use inside of our React components. Now the last thing I want to do related to this new generated code is to open up tsconfig.basejson and add another alias here to that file. And I want it to be named as slash GraphQL slash React. And that's just because I want it to be separated from the index file itself, because this is going to be programmatically generated and I don't want it to be muddled up by the TypeScript server of our editor. So I think this video is going to be mostly set up and there isn't really anything else I want to do before we get into actually implementing the client app. Except I want to take all the assets from the original tutorial and you can grab it from Apollo GraphQL or from my GitHub repo. But once you do, I'm going to add all of that into public in a folder called assets. And this is going to have all the icons and images like this and this and even the dog. But once we have that, we'll be ready to start on the client application, which will be in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.